Civilized Vitality, this is part of our health and wellness series. We're going to talk about community number two. Uh, this is Relate on Purpose. So this is just a sort of a, a brief overview of the Uncivilized Vitality approach to your um, mental and emotional health and happiness. And that involves community. Human beings are hyper-social animals uh, like bees and ants. And we have to interact with each other, not only for our own mental well-being, but for our physical health as well. People that are in isolation get depressed. Uh, you can have other psychosomatic, psychosomatically induced illnesses because you're isolated or don't interact or are not getting along with somebody, a spouse, a sibling, a family member, uh, other people in general. So we're going to talk about how to uh, preserve your health and wellness with the community aspect. Oh, um, the first one, of course, is stories and rituals are vital. Uh, human beings are narrative creatures and, and stories and rituals are important to us, um, religious and non-religious, just uh, daily um, routines, like going to work, those are, are vital. Uh, the second one is relating on purpose. We're going to learn how to do that. And then the third one is learning to recognize um, the forest for the trees. And we'll get back to that in another video. Relating on purpose uh, is a general sort of um, set of tools you can use for your own health and wellness, is learning to be uh, mindful when you when you interact with others. This will include techniques like reflective listening, um, mindful attention. Uh, a lot of times people are in conversations and they're just, they're not really listening. They're just waiting for their turn to talk. Some people don't wait for their turn to talk. They just start yapping while you're talking. Um, sometimes you do that as well. And you know, the royal you, I try not to try to stay mindful of that. And it's one of those things. I think, uh, Diogenes was the philosopher that said we have two ears and one tongue so that we listen twice as much as we talk. That's a good thing to keep in mind for relating on purpose. Well, one aspect I want to talk about today is the five steps we take when we're trying to understand uh, another person's position. And this is the, the way I teach it. Right? The first step is, uh, is going to be knowledge. Right? You can think of this as uh, Socrates' admonishment to first define the terms. You can't do anything until you know what the subject matter is, maybe that the other person is talking about. And sometimes when somebody brings up something new, and, and, and I don't know anything about it, that's when I can suspend all of my replies or reactions at that point and just learn more about it. Right. Two is comprehension. All right. You've heard the position or the, the facts or the new information, uh, and you, you're, the next step would be to check to make sure you understand it. Check your understanding. Let's say you're having a conversation, you're trying to relate with someone. The best pause there is to say, let me check my understanding. And then you repeat back what they said, maybe paraphrasing, maybe uh, um, verbatim, and you check that your knowledge uh, has been secured. Right? The knowledge and comprehension go together. The next step is going to be analysis. Uh, sometimes, sometimes hypothesis. I know that this hypothesis means different things to different people, and they kind of confuse that with a, the hypothetical uh, application in science, like this is my hypothesis and my null, and this is what I'm going to test. But really, hypothesis and analysis, uh, they're very similar in their roots, um, one being Greek, one being Latin. But it would be to to, to test your meaning, to f make a guess, figure out you've checked your comprehension, you understood what's being talked about, now guess at its meaning, or try to come up with a position. So the analysis, hypothesis phase in your thinking as you're trying to say, okay, I understood what they mean, uh, I checked my comprehension, what does that mean for me or in this conversation? So you check the hypothesis. That will allow you to um, put all that information together, because obviously it'd be more than one point, and we arrive at the, the point where you're doing uh, synthesis. You're putting this information together and coming up with a position, right? So and this would be very simple. You either um, agree, don't agree, or you're indifferent. It's very similar to uh, emotional reactions to things. You either like it, you don't like it, you're indifferent. When you're relating to someone, you're gaining new knowledge, uh, their opinion or position. You're going to check your comprehension, make sure you understand that you, what you understand is what they're saying, and you're not making your own, um, putting your own terms on that. Make sure you agree. Then you're going to get to the analysis or hypothesis stage where you think about it and come up with a position. You either agree, disagree, you're indifferent. Maybe you need, maybe your position is you need more information. So you have to gather more knowledge. Maybe you need a deeper understanding or more time to think about it. 
So this is typically where you'll arrive at a position, and this all happens in a flash. Unfortunately, this happens in too much of a flash for the average person, and they're immediately jumping to, uh, you say something, and then the other person immediately jumps to their synthesis, and they want to get their position out there, and they've skipped knowledge, comprehension, analysis. Um, another problem, the second biggest problem, is you skip the fifth part, which is the antithesis. Right? The antithesis is when you play devil's advocate. Um, it's Easter weekend, so that's appropriate. Devil's advocate, um, position where you start to question your own position. Keep going back. Do I need more information? Do I feel comfortable with this position? What am I missing? And if you're not doing this fifth part, Sometimes you're doing yourself a disservice with understanding clearly what, where the other person is coming from so that you can relate back to them on purpose. So I take these five steps in Uncivilized. This would be something like um, pre-civilized hunter-gatherers. When I, I talk about this um, from an anthropological point, sometimes when Native Americans would run into uh, groups from uh, different uh, nations or, or, or clans or tribes or, or totems, they would first pause a lot of the time. They wouldn't start to fight right away. They would, they would stop and try to find something in common so that they didn't have to dispute uh, over the territory or over the game or whatever the argument was. They went out of their way to find positions that were um, complementary or something they could work with, something in common. Contrast that to today's uh, geopolitical atmosphere where everything is everybody's pushed to one pole or another. You know, and kept that keep the, those extremes are kept alive. That's not really an uncivilized way. We try to, um, you know, try to get to an understanding of the other person's position. It doesn't mean you have to accept it or agree with it. You know, sometimes people have stupid positions. That's just a fact of life. But you have to not judge early until you've understood. Uh, you got the basic knowledge. You agree on the terms. You've you've kind of comprehended their their position. Thought about what it means. Come to your own position. Then question that constantly. Right. So this would be in the receiving portion of that. We'll do another video on how to relate, how to speak uh, mindfully so that you can get your information across and articulate your position. Help the other person, especially when they're tempted to skip these first few steps of knowledge, comprehension, analysis. Help them kind of reflect back on that so you can get your position across in an, uh, an expedient manner without getting necessarily angry or, or forcing it. So check that video out. I uh, should have said this at the beginning, but uh, subscribe to the channel and then like the video if this is at all helpful for your own peace of mind.